And let's take a look at the density. So we need a lot more polygons in here. Or we need something that I can start to work with. So can I divide this? Or better yet, let's go into geometry. Sorry, subtools, split. And I'm going to separate this from everything else. So these guys are over here. This guy is right there. That's just going to give me some freedom working with him. I can divide him without consequence. Okay, the edge looping, the polygons are quite stretched. So this is a bit of an issue. But remember, we have Z remesher on our hands. So in in normal ZBrush land, we would be worried about how tiny these polygons are and how large and stretched out these polygons are. That would, that would make things difficult. But we have some room uh, to make this kind of work for us. So let's just start experimenting. Control Shift, Trim Circle. Okay, it's telling me it's multiple subdivision levels, so we've got to delete the lower. Try that again. Okay, see if it does anything. It did give us, which is really cool, a nice group right there, right there. And because of that, we have a hole in the center that works quite nicely with our piece. We're not done yet. You know, we got more work to do, but that's a good start. So let's undo that. And let's do that with some symmetry on. Okay, Z radial and 6. So does it work? with symmetry. Okay. No! It doesn't. But is that really a big deal? Kind of not. Especially since pre precision is not um, what we need here. Okay, all separated out. Let's just double check. No perspective on. Keep perspective off in this case because you need to project along very specific angles. And then just so I've got comparison, I am going to duplicate this subtool and hide that duplicate. And now I'm just going to select my ring. I'm going to go down to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. So I'm going to talk about that again. I have created these groups with this edge looping around it using trim. And then I have duplicated, or not duplicated, I have deleted those holes. And I'm going to go into display properties and double so you can see that our problem now is we need to find a way to bridge these guys. What a choice of words, right? So we need to find a way to bridge this, and I'm, I'm not confident this is going to work. I haven't done this exact uh, demonstration before, which is always risky. But let's try it. We've got no subdivision levels. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select this curve bridge brush. I'm going to turn symmetry off. You do not want symmetry with this. Click, drag, press shift when you get close to that edge. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Click, get close to the edge, press shift. 
and it will instantly start to detect the edge. And it wraps itself around that edge, gets all cozy. And then do the exact same thing, drag and press shift. And oh my god, it's a miracle. Look at that. Pretty cool. So we have bridged these two parts. There are other ways to do what I'm doing right now. Um, that's the beauty of ZBrush. But this really illustrates how this works. So you have to do this one step at a time. So you come to this edge, press shift. You come to this edge, whoops, press shift, and you let it do its business. Now it's discovering a bit of an issue. There's actually two uh, curves here, so I'm going to undo. And let's go stroke, curve, function, delete. Try it again. Voila. Delete. Voila. Delete. Uh, get there. Voila. Okay, and delete, and just a few more to go. Okay, symmetry is hard for something like this. It really complicates the calculation. But there you go. Now you can divide it. You get a little bit of smoothness around the edges. You know, we have polygroups here, so you could polish by feature. And you can also go to Z Remesher. Let's lower this so it's at 0 0.5. And I'm going to say Z Remesh. We're letting it calculate. I'm avoiding talking because that tends to make the computer unhappy. All right. Are you with me? You got my screen back? You see the edge looping? Let me turn polyframe off. And it's not horrible. I mean, it's kind of not horrible in any way, shape, or form. You can divide that. And we could have set our target polygon count higher. If we set it higher, we would have got even crisper edges, right? We want to have a little bit of this wonkiness you see right in there. And, um, you know, things would be a little bit crisper and cleaner. And not only that, actually, one of the things that um, PixLogic recommends, and I'm going to do that now so that we've got this recorded. One of the things they recommend is that you do a Z remesh of a Z remesh. So I'm going to set this high. This is 2,000 polygons. And I'm, I'm going to stop talking so um, it just does its thing. All right, so we have more, not too many. I could have gone a lot higher. Probably want to turn Adapt off. But now we can go and say hit a Z remesh of this as well. And I'm going to set this down to 1. I'm going to hit Z remesh. Let's turn Adapt off. In fact, I think adapt is overwriting. There's a little bit of difference. 
but I want to do just a little bit more. I'm going to say make half and Z remesh. Okay, there we go. So for my eye, that's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit better. I'm noticing less wonkiness in the bottom, but it's just a little trick. And uh, and definitely recommend Z remesh of a Z remesh. That way, uh, you'll get a little bit more fidelity sometimes in the flat planes. Not necessarily all the time, but it's one of their tricks. And yeah, that's pretty solid edge looping, right? I mean, I love that. Okay, so let's turn solo off. There we go. Now we can duplicate this and move it back if we wanted to. Um, but I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave it just exactly like this. I'm not going to sweat the sweat that, and you guys can worry about it. But we effectively have our Gatlin gun at this point. I can save this ZTL. And uh, I will save it under the ZTL folder. Gatlin Gun. It's just spelled weird. It's a G A T uh, L I N G. Okay. So that's one thing I wanted to create and, uh, and show you the process for. And there's like 20 others, which <laughs> I'm doubting we're going to have time for. But let me stop for two seconds and get some feedback from you guys because I didn't show any majorly exciting pieces or uh, processes but I did show some kind of intricate steps make sure you auto group maybe you guys are well advanced above and beyond now so this was all easy but give me a shout out how uh, any questions was that all sensible to you Thanks, Michael. Everybody else? Yes, Steve, definitely much faster when you don't explain it. Johannes, can uh, polygroups guide the, um, how do I say it? Uh, guide the process. Uh, I'm not sure if you could say guide, but they do have features of freeze uh, groups. And that can kind of make sure that whatever is a separated group, the, it's going to hold more to the individual uh, edging, which is not a bad thing to test. So there we go. Let's say freeze group. Now borders should mean the edging of openings, things like that, which we're not really working with right now. But let's just Z remesh while I look at all the rest of the questions. Daniel's good. Jeff's still early, not easy. Yeah, that's definite. Uh, curve bridge is new, um, but useful. Good, great. Uh, Paul would like an array tool. You gotta tell me a little more about that, Paul. Does Curve Bridge work with Dynamesh? Uh, they're separate tools. You can use Curve Bridge and then Dynamesh. You can Curve Bridge while you have Dynamesh on. Just as soon as you Dynamesh, it's going to redo all that. So if I understand the question correctly, they're just separate tools. You can do what we just did with Dynamesh and Booleans. But the problem with Dynamesh, in fact, let me ask you guys, because there's, there's a very important structural, I would call it a structural problem with Dynamesh. And you know what? Let me escape out of Z remesh. My audio probably went left, right, and center. Okay. All right. You can hear me okay? 
um, Dynamesh, the problem, as you guys are all saying, is uh, it's just, it's a little bit, it's soft. I'll say it that way. Dynamesh is soft. It will always be soft. It is designed to be soft. It is not designed to do hard-edged work like we just did with Curved Bridge. And it's, it's totally different. You can get around some of that softness with project. So you could do Boolean, cut things out, have project. Gets a little weird when you're projecting with some things supposing to disappear. But the structural problem is that Dynamesh is soft. And in this case, Curve Bridge is in is 100% not soft. I mean, that's a very nice beveled uh, machined edge, basically. Okay, let me just check the questions and then I'll move on. Uh, Corbin saying, uh, ever have issues with curved bridge twisting or actually closing one of the holes? Yes, I have seen that. Um, it's all, yes, I have seen that. It has a lot to do with where you place the curve, what you're trying to curve against. It, it definitely has an automatic, how do I say it? It has some limitations because it will find the path of, uh, the shortest path between the curves. So sometimes that can appear to close things off. Uh, Kathleen, would the new trim tool cut the hole and bridge the side rather than the two-step process I just used? Let me show you guys. Trim circle. Let's just go down. I'm going to delete higher. All right. So look at that. That cut this section off and trimmed it. What was different? because I used the trim circle here as well. What was different about this stroke versus the one that cut these guys out? The difference was that part of my circle of influence was off the model. If your circle of influence is on the model, then it does not cut out like that. It just creates that poly group. There you go. Okay. 